hello and welcome back to my channel. So I have a bit of a confession to make to all of my subscribers. I have been in a reading slump. My reading lately has been absolute trash and I've been trying to keep up with my YouTubing, posting videos in a timely manner, but it's just been so difficult because I haven't been enjoying anything that I've been reading with rare exception. But as a whole, I have just been kind of not having fun and everything that I've picked up has just gotten to be pretty boring to me. And that's really not something that I've dealt with much in the past. I'm still excited when I like pass by a bookstore or stop in and I, you know, want to pick something else out. I'm also still excited when I look at my shelf with my TBR books and just getting new books in the mail and stuff. But every time I go to read one, I'm just like, I don't know if this is exactly what I'm looking for. I don't know if this is 100% what I want right now. And then it just makes reading become a bit of a chore. So right now, you know, I'm starting to work out of this. And if this is something you've been dealing with lately or ever, just know that you're not alone. I feel like I've been lucky to have not experienced much of this myself in the past, but I'm working my way out of it. I feel like we are over the biggest hurdle and it is time to start enjoying my books again. In the month of August, I actually ended up DNFing three books and I gave another one two stars. There's also another two books that I kind of temporarily DNF'd and I know I will get back to them because I know that I'm the problem when it comes to these books because they're both books that I have been really hyped to read. Those two are and So I Roar by Abby DeRay. I've been looking forward to this since I heard about it. So I know that I will come back around and this will be a book that I am excited about at some point. It's just not right now. The other one is The God of the Woods by Liz Moore. I started this, I read mo not most of it, but I read probably half of this. And I just like was starting to, my mind was wandering. I was listening to the audiobook and reading it simultaneously, but like my mind was wandering. I was getting confused about who certain characters were. And this book is really pretty long. So I felt like since I wasn't enjoying it up till that point, only in the sense that I knew I had the capacity to enjoy this. I know this is a book that is very much up my alley. It's, it's really got a lot to it that I tend to enjoy in books. So I was like, I'm the problem, not the book. So we are gonna just set it aside for now and we will go back to it at a later date. Another book that I DNF'd is The Art of Fielding by Chad Harbach. This is an author that I've never read anything from before, but this book has won a bunch of awards and it's about a college uh, baseball team. And as most of you know, I'm a huge baseball fan. It is just anything about baseball. I'm usually like, okay, I'm in, like sign me up. But I was so bored. I probably got about a third of the way through this one. And I was just like waiting for something to happen. And something, something big kind of did happen at one point, but it just, after the, the aftermath of that was like not exciting and nothing really changed. This big event happened and everything kind of continued on the same monotonous level. So I'm very disappointed because I really was excited for this one, but sometimes you just, you know, in a different, in a different, part of my life, time of my life, maybe this will be a book that I would love, but I just don't think I enjoyed it enough to ever think about going back to pick it up again. Another one of the ones that I DNF'd this month, or I should say in July, is Till Death Do Us Part by Lori Elizabeth Flynn. This is an art copy that I had and I just thought, I just thought it was so bad. The main character was so stupid. She made the worst choices and I was just getting so frustrated there were also just, it felt to me, maybe I'm missing something, but it felt like there were a ton of plot holes that really didn't need to be there if she had just tweaked stuff a tiny bit. It was just, I, I mean, I got like 60% through that one and I just didn't care. I just like did not care what happened. And there was so much secrecy that wasn't being shared to the reader in any way so there was like kind of no way for us to figure out like really what was going to happen and I just hate when that happens in books I, I just hate it so 
that was a DNF. Disappointing because it is an art copy and I wanted to really like it, but it just didn't. This last one might be the one that I'm most upset about DNFing and that is the villain edit. This is literally a brand new release, like days ago. And I bought this because I was like, oh, this is the book that's going to get me out of my slump. This is it. It's about a girl who goes on a Bachelor-esque television show and is portrayed as the villain and that's kind of as far as I got. I actually kept my bookmark in here. I got to page 120 and I, I just hated this main character. Like, I don't think you can get to say that you're getting the villain edit when you are being an absolute nightmare to everyone around you and treating them all horribly and being a giant bitch. Like, I just think that she was getting the villain edit in a fair way. There's also a really weird, like, love triangle kind of situation. And I was just like, this doesn't need to be here. This is stupid. And, you know, it really was a bummer because I was like, this is the book that's going to get me out of my slump. This writer and... The uh, main character in the book are from Charleston and I actually bought this in Charleston. There was like a whole display with all the books like because she had done an event there and signed a bunch of stuff and so like I was so pumped but this was just really really not good. Now even though I've just gone over like the fact that I was in a reading slump and all of that I do have a couple tips that I feel like really had helped me kind of dig my way out of it that I thought it would be nice to share. So a big one is definitely read a book you've already read that you know you love. Reading an old favorite is almost guaranteed to at least get you into the habit again of being excited, I guess, about reading. Because if you already know what's going to happen, you already know you're going to love it, there's a lot of pressure taken off of the way that I think we feel when we're in a slump where it's just kind of like, oh my god, there's so much I need to get out of this. I have to love this book. And like you're trying to force it a little bit. So I definitely recommend reading a book that you've already read and you know you love. Along with that, pick up a new book, but from an author who you've historically loved. I think this can be really helpful. Like for example, I would pick up a book maybe by Stephen King because I have really enjoyed almost all of the books that I've read by him and he has so many to choose from. I could also pick up a book by like Kevin Wilson because I've really enjoyed his books. You know, just find someone that you've You've really liked their books in the past, you like the style, and maybe it won't be a, f a new favorite, but it will be enough to kind of make you feel excited to go and pick it up. Pick a trope or a super specific kind of plot device that you know that you love. For example, for me, I know I love anything involving an influencer. I know I love mommy drama books. And so those are always going to be something that I enjoy reading and have fun reading, even if it's like, okay, actually, I end up not liking this book necessarily, but like, I probably at least got some enjoyment out of the book just based on that alone. And as an aside, the book that really kind of got me out of this slump right now is called You Will Never Be Me by Jesse Q. Stutanto, and I loved it. It was so good. It was about two mommy influencers and kind of they're best friends, but then they kind of become frenemies and then one of them is murdered and it's just, it's a whole thing. So I really loved that and I feel like that has really kind of lit something in me and made me so excited to read again. Pick a short book. If you pick a book that's not going to take you long to read, I think there's a lot of motivation to be like, okay, even if this isn't like the most fun I've ever had or whatever, it's going to be over soon. We're going to get through it and that can kind of help. However, I'm always going to tell you to DNF a book if you're not enjoying it. But if it's something that you are enjoying, but you're like, okay, okay, like, I don't know if this is the book to get me out of a slump, you might feel compelled to finish it. And like, sometimes that can be the motivation you need to get through and like start enjoying the act of reading again. Don't read on your phone. Put your phone in the other room. Put your phone across the table from you so you can't reach it easily. These I think can be so distracting and I know that I can kind of tell within myself when I'm enjoying a book or not based on if I am like constantly picking up my phone. And this doesn't go for Kindles because I will say that I sometimes when I'm reading a physical book, I literally try to like press on a word if I don't know it. Like if you have a Kindle, you know, you can like hold down on a specific word and it will give you the definition. So that's my only kind of like eh about the whole like put your phone on the other side of the room because sometimes you need to look up a word. But 
just like don't read on your phone because those notifications are killer. If you are on an iPad and you're like at home so it's connected to Wi-Fi, you know, turn that thing on airplane mode, turn the Wi-Fi off. Like you don't need to get notifications while you're trying to read because I think the more distracted you are while reading, the harder it's gonna be to get yourself like sucked into a book. And the last tip that I will mention is to like set the scene a little bit. Figure out what you like best when you're reading and really set the scene. Whether that is curled up in bed with some snacks and like a big cup of coffee or tea and get yourself nice and comfy or if you're on the couch, light some candles, get a glass of wine, blankets, whatever you need to be at your peak reading level, do it because that makes such a difference that I have found and I am so excited to get back to the book that I'm currently reading, which is also getting me out of my slump, and that is Strange Sally Diamond by Liz Nugent. I'm loving it. So hopefully this gave you a little bit of hope if you're in a reading slump that you too can get out of it. It will be okay. And I hope some of these tips maybe helped you and I'll keep them in mind for the future too if I also am in a reading slump again. So I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed, I would love it if you would. And I'll see you in the next one. Bye.